Thank you so much for coming. After such wonderful um, talks going before, I'm going to show you how not to, uh, how not to give a talk. And I'll be doing it without props and reading from a couple of sheets of uh, paper here. And I'd like to start with a historical story. In 1817, Prince Charlotte died at the age of 21 after giving birth to a stillborn son. As a consequence of that death, her bachelor uncle was encouraged to marry and he conceived Princess Alexandra, who grew up to become Queen Victoria. The point of this story is the childbirth has been a time of danger even in the most privileged of families. Pregnancy is full of risk for both mother and child. Babies and mothers have died during pregnancy and childbirth throughout history and prehistory. Why is this so? The Bible ascribes it to the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Um, as punishment for tasting of the tree of knowledge, Eve was to give birth to children in sorrow. But as an evolutionary biologist, this is a far from satisfactory um, explanation. <laughs> Pregnancy is central to reproduction. It's how we all got to be here. And should it seem to have been perfected by natural selection? My heart, my kidney, my liver have been working year after year, now for almost 54 um, years, and they're still working fairly well. And yet in those brief nine months of pregnancy, comparatively speaking, all sorts of things can go um, wrong with substantial frequency. Pregnancy has always been a time of fear as well as hope. So what is different about the physiological state of pregnancy from um, what's happening in the rest of the um, body? Now some people some suggest that, well, this is all about um, it's sort of like a story of the fall. This is all about modern civilization. It's something unnatural about humans. But if you think we have problems in pregnancy, you should see the statistics for spotted hyenas or for squirrel monkeys. This seems to be a general, prop a general problem for a lot of mammals, though human women do have things fairly bad. And if I get a chance in questions, I might ask why that is the case. Pregnancy is different from other physiological processes because it isn't occurring within a single body, but it's an interaction between two individuals that are genetically different from each other and don't have, in an evolutionary sense, identical interests. So now natural selection is often acting at cross purposes. Natural selection acting on fetuses to enhance their fitness is sometimes working in an opposite direction from natural selection acting on mothers to enhance their fitness. And this social conflict, if we look at the modern United States, situations of social conflict don't always come up with efficient outcomes. Um, this conflict comes about primarily because maximizing a, mo a mother's number of surviving offspring what natural selection is doing on mothers is different from maximizing the survival of any particular offspring. It's sad to say, but babies, and in particular embryos, have been replaceable in the past. If an embryo has died or a baby has died, a mother can have another child and has a relatively low cost to her fitness, though a very, very big cost to the baby's um, fitness. Okay, so let's talk about some expressions of this. Princess Charlotte probably died from hemorrhage, massive loss of blood. Why is this the case? Well, the human embryo doesn't sit in the cavity of the uterus, but actually bur buries its way into the wall of the uterus, soon in implantation, and taps into maternal blood vessels and opens up those blood vessels so that blood is flowing through the placenta, giving it that baby access to those um, resources. When the placenta comes away, there are large open vessels, which if constriction doesn't work very well, um, massive bleeding, bleeding is a result. But this is a unique feature of human pregnancies and related primates. If you're to look at a pregnancy in a dolphin, for example, their placenta is non-invasive, it never penetrates maternal tissues, the placenta comes away cleanly without any mass without any danger of um, hemorrhage. 
And similar conflicts can explain symptoms of nausea, of hypertension during pregnancy, and of gestational diabetes. <laughs> so this is fascinating. Now, I'll tell you a, a, a simple secret as to why we were so tempted to invite you, because I heard a story that you, working with evolutionary principles, were led to make a prediction about what might be going on in some kinds of uh, at-risk human pregnancies, which some colleagues in medical schools here were able to uh, independently confirm. Is this true? It's half true, I well, guess, that's not some bad. of those stories uh, do. I've been, uh, so one of the conditions I'm particularly interested in is preeclampsia. It's in the developing world, sorry, in the developed world, perhaps the principal source of maternal mortality. Um, this is caused by um, constriction of maternal blood vessels, and I'm suggesting it's being caused by factors released by the placenta, causing damage to maternal blood vessels, which is channeling more blood to the fetus. And people working at Beth Israel Hospital have started to find some of these um, factors. Yeah. Thank you. So r roughly right. Yeah, I'm, that is amazing to me. I think we're going to get a question from our youngest questioner of the evening. Please. Uh, yeah, yes, our son uh, wanted oh, me no, to... Oh, no, not you. The other... No, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. translating for him. Uh, he wanted me to ask um, if you've done any comparative research into uh, some of the other mammals, such as the marsupials, uh, and how this plays out for them, the monotremes, or even some of the other animals that have live birth, like certain garter snakes and sharks and so forth. So I give a course at Harvard called Vertebrate Viviparity, and we start with sharks, and we do garter snakes, and we do the many origins of um, viviparity. One of the interesting things, even if you look in mammals, the most variable organ in the mammalian body is the placenta. And that makes sense because of this ongoing evolutionary conflict that it, you know, we come up with a good design for our kidney or our liver, and my kidney looks rather like a whale's kidney or a lion's kidney. But our placentas are very different, and that's because every fetal adaptation, change in placental structure, uh, structure is being matched by a maternal counteradaptation. And so it's sort of like an arms race, and it never settles down. Thank you. Next question over there, please. I guess this is a very related question, just do you have any idea why humans are more screwed than other animals in this way? <laughs> why, why, why humans? I, I, sus I suspect this is partly to do with human social and cultural evolution, because if we were looking at a chimpanzee fetus and a chimpanzee mother, if the mother is very, very sick at the time of um, delivery, that's very, very bad for that um, infant. And so that's an evolutionary constraint on how much the fetus can demand from the mother. But in humans, we have a lot of social support there. So if a mother has a difficult delivery, there are people around to look after the baby and to help the mother get through providing food, etc. And a consequence of that, that is relax the selection on how much the baby um, can demand. Has, has that kind of support been going, uh, available long enough to be evolutionarily significant, do you think? Um, that kind of support is present in all human societies that we um, know of. It's sort of a behaviour that doesn't fossilise, but it, it's been around for 100,000 years or so, one would imagine. Okay, thank you. Yes, please. Hi, combining the evolutionary biology and the medical um, elements of your work, do we see any evidence based on the fact that a lot of women are now carrying to term pregnancies that are not from their own biological issue, but from outside, and therefore there may actually be more evidence of some of the conflict given the, um, the in vitro fertilization, which may come just from the mother, but, um, yeah. but may not. So the short answer to that is that the um, success rate is very comparable with a complete donor embryo, which is completely unrelated to the mother, or um, you know, a normally conceived sort of embryo. So people worried about immunological problems and they're not a major factor. There are some specific problems in IVF and I can talk about them later. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We've time for one more question, if there is one. Talk about them now, please. Sorry. IVF. I, so in IVF, so one thing that I have been interested in is conflicts within the genome between genes of maternal and paternal origin. 
And this is a phenomenon called genomic imprinting. We know that paternal genes favor greater development of the placenta, maternal genes um, restraining that, and some disorders of these genes are of higher frequency in babies conceived through IVF, and we don't quite understand why that is occurring. So what you're saying, if I understand this, is that it's not just a conflict potentially between mother and infant, but between father and mother and infant. Or between genes of paternal and maternal origin All right. within the fetus. I'm, I stand corrected. Thank you.